Happy summer to you all. I'm so excited to see you. As Ms. Stern said, I am Ms. Afshari. I'm one of the assistant principals in the high school. And I am so looking forward to working with young people today. Usually, I guess you guys are a little bit younger than what I am uh, typically used to teaching. So this is exciting. Good morning. And thank you for uh, typing into the chat box. You can continue to do that as we work through our session today. Can everybody kind of give me, show me some hands if you can hear me all right and, and everything's cool on your end? Awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're all adorable. So we need a couple of supplies today because the goal of today's session is to come up with your own poem. How many of you like poetry? Anybody? Okay, I see Hector shaking his head. Nope, not me. <laughs> That's okay. I see some hands. Caleb, Zoe, I see your hand up. Perfect. Well, even if you don't like poetry, and maybe it's not, it's just not your thing. Maybe you're more of a math person or a science person. I was an English teacher for a really long time, like 24 years. So poetry has always been kind of in my soul and I really enjoy it. But I recognize that some students just don't. So I wanna try to give you um, a practice today in how you can maybe enjoy poetry a little bit more by working with words that already appear in text. That sounds weird, right? So you're going to be creating a poem from something that has already been written. Huh? All right, so I want everybody to get either a book or some type of a text that your parent won't mind you marking up as in using a highlighter or even a Sharpie. So I've got a highlighter book here because this is The Great Gatsby. You'll read this in high school, hopefully. And um, it's a classic. You might have uh, heard of it before. F. Scott Fitzgerald is the author. And this is a classic book. I would never use a Sharpie in this classic book. But what I could use in it is a highlighter because then you would still be able to see the text even if you have marked it up with a highlighter. Now, here's my other book that I, I'm going to be using. This is, and th I mean no offense <laughs> to John Cotter, who is the author of this book, but this is Accelerate, and it is one of my books from an educational administration class. Great book, I learned a lot from it, but I don't mind using a black Sharpie in it to cross off words, not at all. So this is what I'm going to use for my Sharpie part and I've got lots to choose from. The Sharpie that works best is what color, do you think, for this activity that we're going to be doing? What color do you think is going to be best for, for getting rid of words that already appear in a book? Cobain's got it. You got it, Maddie. Yeah, black. Yep. So we're going to go with with a with the black Sharpie, the good old standby, right? Let me take you through some examples of what we're going to be doing today, just so we all get on the same page and you understand what blackout poetry is. That's what this is called. Blackout poetry. Has anyone heard of that before? Blackout poetry. Good. So you're learning something new today, which is awesome. And then you can use this with any text that you can find. You know what really works well with this? Newspapers, magazines. Okay, so as we're working here today, maybe you wanna step away from your laptop and go try to find something that has words, anything that has words. It could be a book, um, a newspaper clipping, a magazine, a piece of paper that's laying there next to you that has words on it. That's what we're going to be using. Just make sure you check in with the guardian in your home, if you can mark it up. That's the only thing. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get anyone else in trouble. Make sure that you're able to mark up the work that you're using. Oh, I see some books. You guys are showing me your books that you can mark up. You're using a highlighter, Katie? Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Kobe. I see yours as well. Oh, Ella and Ava, I see that you have comics there. That's really interesting. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna look at what the heck is this lady talking about? What is blackout poetry? 
So let me share. All right, and we're gonna go over to my PowerPoint. Okay, so here we are. Are you feeling creative today, my friends? I sure hope so. I'm gonna get my sunglasses back on because this is so bright. I need my shades. All right, so let's all feel creative. We're gonna take a peek at what our blackout poetry really is. So the goal is to use sources of print, it could be anything, to create poetry for a variety of purposes. Right now, for today, the purpose is to have some fun, right? And to use those brains a little bit so they don't get stale over the summer. Here's the process. We're going to be displaying poetry through the omission of words in already printed text. Omission. Hmm, that might be a word that you get stuck on. We're going to be deleting those words, right? We're going to be getting rid of words, leaving words that make sense together in order to create a poem. So there's an example on the board right here. Underneath all of that black Sharpie are other words. But what this person did is omitted them, meaning left them behind or got rid of them all together with that black Sharpie in order to leave words behind that make sense in some way. And we're trying to be poetic here, right? What is poetry? Does anybody know what poetry, how do you define poetry? Looking for some examples of how you define poetry before we move on. I told you we're gonna be dusting off those brains a little bit and talking a little bit about schooly stuff and this would happen in your English classes. Let's see, where did my chat go? Let's take a peek here. Ms. Stearns, maybe you can. Yeah, so we had, so, uh, Stephen said words, Kobe said writing, uh, Sabrina and Ramek said rhymes, Cobain said Ooh. poets, so a lot of good words there. There are some good words there, all right. Usually what a poet does is he or she tries to say something with as limited amount of words possible. So it's a condensed or smaller version of what someone else might write an essay about, right? So if you write an essay about love, a poet would take that essay and pick out the most important words that convey a thought or an emotion. And that would become a poem. So let's look at this. We didn't know anything but after we lived, we started to learn. There are other words under that black Sharpie that made it a larger version of the same thought. So we're gonna be taking words away in order to leave behind the essence of a thought or an emotion or an image, okay? So here's the process. And we're not gonna look at the words on the screen right now. We're just gonna look at what the blackout poem says, right? Look at what's over on the right-hand side of the screen here. Again, underneath all of that black are other words. What this person did was they looked for words that can stand alone, that when put together, make something truly unique, right? So I, gotta I can't see. I got to take my sunglasses off. It says, nothing is like I think it is. I never imagined anger is the machine that kills. It's kind of deep, kind of poetic, and that's an example of a blackout poem, okay? You can see there was a full page of text there before. This person found words that when you put them together, just those words, they make something pretty cool. Right? And poetry is meant to be heard. So I hope that we're able to read some of these together today. There's upside down Stephen. <laughs> you just popped onto my screen. That's awesome. And you can start working on this if you want, even while I'm talking. Because I'd like at the end of the session to be able to see some of your examples. You can show us on camera what the examples of your own blackout poems look like. And I want to do one too. So I'm excited about this. So you can see here, there's an, another example. And this person gave it a title because most poems have titles. This is called Creativity is Subtraction. What? This is a poem about blackout poetry. So cool. Okay, so this will explain it. Caleb, I know, right? 
this is a poem about what we're doing. It says, anyone can scribble out words. The clever part is knowing which words to leave. And that is so true. Yes, we can take our Sharpie, whatever color we want, but I'm gonna use black. And we can scribble out all the words we want. That's easy. The tricky part is knowing which words to leave behind in order to be your poem. Okay, let's take, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Cause I wanna get to the part where we actually try this out. Here's another one. You can see, look at all of the Sharpie on this page. I would not do this to my Great Gatsby book because it's a classic, but I will do that. Oh yes, I will to this boring book. <laughs> Sorry, John Cotter. It's just not creative enough for me. This one says, I dream of words spoken into infinite space, glittering on with heavy beauty and shadow and no shame. It's kind of deep, right? It's beautiful. This might go over your head a little bit. Um, you might not be to the age where poetry speaks to your soul, and that's okay. There can be really simple, beautiful poems as well. So you're gonna be creative and you're gonna come up with what makes sense to you. Here's another one with a lot of black on the page. It says, whether we admit it or not, we do try to conceal what's stored in our minds. I wish we had time to go over what these poems mean because they're pretty cool, but we're just gonna go with looking at some examples Here's one from a Sylvia Plath piece of fiction. It says, I set out for a noiseless room. Then I remembered the silence depressed me. So you can see, you can pick out phrases to leave behind as well, not just individual words. And that can sometimes be really cool to try as well. There's no rules here. There, there are no rules. We're just going to go with what speaks to us. Let me try to find something. Look at this one. So this person got uber creative and not only picked out words, but also has a design to go along with the poem. They're a little bit harder to read because looking in the circles, you can see the first one is in my nature is one who wishes to know himself. I am a sleeping thought that does not cease thinking. I am the dream that I see and feel. I am kind of gives you like a directional kind of zigzag even within how this person left the words on the screen. It's very cool. All right. I don't know how much time this person had, but a lot more time than I have. Right? Look at how creative this one is. Look at all the swirls and the colors, all done with handy dandy sharpies. Right? And you don't have to do that. But I want to get to some that have, there's a cool one. And it's hard to read, but it's a very, very short poem. And I can't read it because my eyes are bad. Maybe you can, but it's just what's in the sunglasses, what's left behind. But the picture, the negative space picture, goes along with the words that you see in those sunglasses. Very cool. Here's one um, that is about an archer. So the person put in an actual photo or a drawn picture of an archer, which is kind of cool. Here's something that looks like it's from a textbook that they picked out some stuff and then scribbled around it. You can see people get very, very creative with their blackout poetry. This one is really cool. Break outside the common mind. That's like, think outside the box. And looks like they used paint like maybe some type of oil paint to um, go along with the words that were left behind. What do you think about this stuff? This is pretty cool, right? Do you think you're ready to try it with your own piece of literature, whether that is a pamphlet that's near you or a magazine or a newspaper or a book that you can mark up? Remember, you can either use a Sharpie to black out words or if you are using a classic like The Great Gatsby, you can use a highlighter to pick out your words so that you don't 
mess up the book and you can still read it later on, right? So you can highlight words that you want to keep. All right, let's see if there's anything else that I wanna show you before we try. Oh, we're ready to try, let's try it. So go find a piece of text from anywhere. Like I said, old book, newspaper, magazine. What I recommend doing is circling words first, circling them. To identify, yes, this is a this is a good word that would fit into a short poem. Again, short poem. If you are very creative, you can create an image in this leftover space that goes along with your poem. There's really no wrong way to do this, except if you mess up a classic like Great Gatsby. All right, so we're gonna try this. I'm gonna stop sharing. We're going to take a little while. I want to see, is, it, is anyone working on this right now? I see that Ella and Ava, you guys are. Oh, this is kind of cool. All right, I, I see heads. I see the tops of heads, which means that you guys are actually doing this. And I'm behind. So I'm going to get my book out. I'm going to start with this guy first. Because I really want to just use my Sharpie. All right. And Miss Stearns, maybe we'll take like, hmm eight to ten minutes to do this yeah sounds good i'll, I'll All right. um let you guys know when that time's up awesome thank so you yep and I, I can't wait to see your examples if you're willing to share them on camera okay let's see oh this is dry <laughs> this book is boring can't wait to use my sharpie on it Remember, poetry is what means something to you. You don't have to worry about proper grammar, proper spelling, um, even if words fit together the way that they should. It's really your opportunity to be creative and to think outside the box. So don't think you're doing it wrong, okay? Oh, I see words crossed off, that's exciting. Absolutely, Cobain, you can, you can make as short a poem as you want. Sometimes really effective poems are super short, right? Let's see here. Oh, I just did my first Sharpie mark. Oh, that's a little scary. Cobain said he's not good at poems, but I think practice will get you there. And like you said, um, you know, short poems, absolutely fine. Absolutely. Oh, Stephen, you said you got one. Yeah, I see you hold it up. Um, we will just give everyone a little bit more time. Um, but that's awesome. Very cool. I can't wait for you to read them then to your family. And I can't wait to read you mine because mine's coming along pretty well, I have to say. So far, I've got some words blacked out and I'm leaving some pretty cool words behind. All right, I think I have mine. That was too easy. <laughs> hey, Dan, what you got there? I saw your hand like this. Are you done? I see you talking. You can type? It's been about uh, six, six or so minutes. So um, okay. if you guys need another minute or so, but if we, if you guys want to start sharing, I mean, it's you know up to you, Ms. Achari, yeah. But Absolutely. I would love to see, oh, I see some that are coming onto the screen. Words, the way some people do. But I came across something that kind of made sense to me um, and we'll see what you think. It might be a little bit um, uh, lofty, a little over the heads, but I tried my best and that's really all we can do. So mine says, person machine, late 30s, vice president, high tech, served up honest works that could sit on the conference table, totally authentic. The man was a fantastic role model, lasting impact. 
So you can see that even with the words that were left behind, give you some idea as to what this whole page was talking about, which is pretty cool. And obviously it's talking about, since this is an educational administrative book, it's talking about leadership and people who lead well. When you think of like um, politics or CEOs of companies or folks who just are really good at managing other people. Would you say that this is a positive man that's being portrayed with a thumbs up or a negative man that's being portrayed with a thumbs down? Let me read it to you again and then I wanna see your, your thumbs up and down. It says, person machine. What's a person machine? I don't know, but it sounds cool. Person machine, late 30s, vice president, high tech, served up honest works that could sit on the conference table, totally authentic. The man, was a fantastic role model, lasting impact. Is that a thumbs up for a good guy or a thumbs down for a bad guy? What do you think? Fantastic role model, lasting impact. Yeah, you got it, Maddie. She's excited. <laughs> Absolutely. This is, this is giving you some ideas about meaning behind poetry. That if you want to get something across, you can do so with a limited amount of words. You can also do so by taking words that already exist and removing some, leaving behind the essence of what the original book was about. On this page, that, that is the essence of what we were just, what I just said about that man, that's the essence of what this whole page was about. It's describing a man who's a good leader, right? So, pretty cool. You might discover that when removing words and leaving words behind through doing this blackout poetry, you might discover that you understand what the whole page is about by just reading the words that you left behind. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Oh, some of you are typing in what words you left behind. That's amazing. Please feel free to do that. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Reagan. Very nice. Steven, I'm just scrolling back up to see what some of your poems are. Our purse is to make the world better in observance of independence. That's not weird at all. That's pretty cool, Steven. Loving it. Kobe, you typed yours in. You guys are you guys are really good. This is this is exciting. Mine says SMA is dedicated to cure muscular disease that takes away a person's ability to walk. It is the number, it is the number of death for infants. I got something out of that. Thank you. Yeah, keep typing your ideas into the chat box. These are great. Harry Hodson said a northerner route, or a northern route, one knows when he was born, his ship got stuck in the Arctic. <laughs> it's so simple, but really cute. It tells a little story, Sabrina. Regan, thank you for that. Thank you for the um, correction with the pronunciation of your name. It's important for folks to get your name correct. Absolutely. Oh, purpose, Stephen, got it. That makes even better sense. Thank you for that follow-up comment. Mermaid Tavern. Those two words put together, Audrey, are really interesting. What do you think a mermaid tavern would look like? I just got a clear picture in my head. Oh, Gabriella, you made an actual picture out of yours. That looks like a flag. These are very cool. Drunk fish, says Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Again, some really cool words that are put together, and that describes our mermaid tavern beautifully. Oh, I see more coming in. Audrey, fruits of paradise, sweeter day, said he saw the mermaid in the zodiac. What? That's beautiful. 
Oh, I see. Regan, thank you again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We've got some allusions to religion, and we know that that's very important to many people. So thank you for that. Tally, unicorns charged right over the spot I have. I love that. I wish a unicorn would charge right over this spot that I have. That is really cool. Oh, I see pictures. This is very exciting. <laughs> Thank you, Kobe. You have some informational text there, and that can even be considered creative too. You guys, it's 11.30. You did so well with this exercise. Audrey, that was a beautiful picture, by the way. Let's see, the Hensleys. May I read? I think I can. If you typed it in, that kind of gives me the, that, this is really, really nice. The Hensleys said, for the East, not far from work and school, I am very self-reliant. I gave little thought. My actions affected others. I was 17 years old, returned to Germany. I lived under a roof. That's beautiful. It's so clever. I love the words that you left behind. Maddie says, a fish had been caught up in the claws of an eagle, was screaming terror. They pulled until at last the eagle let him go. You guys are really good at this. You're making it seem like you knew what we were going to do already today, and you just pulled out all the stops. This is great. Pally says, been standing in. I took off surprisingly fast. People pulled children. What is the ANS? I want to say people pulled children away after that. Been standing in. That is a really cool way to start a poem. A and I maps. Got it. Cobain, I don't make deals or trades unless it's important. Very short but meaningful words that you guys are leaving and, and making some sense out of them. Ella says, Ella and Ava, I said to eat outside. We can't get them through the door. <laughs> That's awesome. I can think of so many things. I said to eat outside. We can't get them through the door. That makes me wonder about all sorts of things that could be going on in that scenario. I love it. Oh, thank you, Cobain. You were giving us um, some information. That's, it. That's excellent. Okay, well, I'm seeing some really exciting things both in the chat box and on camera. And I wanna thank you for a really excellent session. Oh, Brennan says, a dream for California, the tech weapons machine, becoming president and saving the world. Oh, Gabriella, that, and you're showing on camera there as well. That is an excellent example of what blackout poetry should look like. And you guys did a great job at, at typing in your examples into the chat box as well. I hope you continue to work with this on books that you don't mind marking up or just in anything you find laying around. Ask mom or dad or grandmom or aunt or whomever. Can I take this and play with it? Because I want to I want to use some of those words. And you might end up really enjoying poetry, even if you thought you might not before. So thank you everyone for your time and attention today. Thank you, Ms. Stearns, for mediating today and have a wonderful rest of your summer camp. Thanks for joining us.